Now that the Surface Pro 2017 has been released, should you still consider the Surface Pro 4? Let's begin. This particular model is equipped with an Intel Core i5-6300U, 8GB of RAM, and 256GB of storage all powered by a 382 watt hour battery. Boot times are respectable and are on par with its competitors, but write speeds may be a bit slower than what you'd expect due to the older hardware. There are several other configurations ranging from a Core M to a Core i7 processor, along with different capacities for their SSDs and RAM amounts. For example, the cheapest model contains a Core M processor, 128GB of storage, and 4GB of RAM. In the box you will find the device front and center, the typical instruction manuals, a magnetic charger, and the Surface Pen. However, I need to mention that this current base model no longer includes the Surface Pen out of the box. Moving on, there are many trade-offs for each variant. This particular service has decent performance and can handle some advanced applications at the cost of battery longevity. Along with decreased battery life, fan noise can become fairly loud when using intensive applications on the more powerful surface. I'm usually able to make it through a day with about 5 hours of screen on time, but you should still carry around the compact charger. The base model, which contains an Intel Core M, can last much longer due to its low power consumption at the cost of raw performance. The bottom line is that if you mostly want a surface for note taking and internet browsing, the cheaper model is the better option. In comparison, the Surface Pro 2017 is equipped with the newest 7th generation Intel Kaby Lake processors as well as a larger battery, while also offering several configurations depending on your preference. Also, for the models that do use a fan, the noise has been greatly reduced. In theory, all of these upgrades together should increase battery life, however, you're going to be paying a premium for a small bump in performance. Right out of the box, you'll notice that the Surface Pro 4 has a very sleek build. Corners are rounded and the magnesium chassis feels premium. The screen is protected by a sheet of Gorilla Glass 4, but I still decided to buy a screen protector for added protection. The kickstand on the back is nice and solid, however, I worry about its sturdiness over time. The top half of the device features several openings for airflow. You will also find the power and volume up and down buttons along the top edge of the device. The stylus is well built with nearly an all metal casing and the tips are replaceable to your liking. If you decide to buy the $20 tool of course. There are also two buttons. One in the eraser and one on the side. Through a bluetooth connection, these buttons can be programmed as shortcuts. Such as opening up an application or even creating a sticky note. The stylus can be conveniently stored on the side of the surface with magnets, which is a much needed upgrade from the Pro 3, which uses a little loop on the keyboard. Moving on to the keyboard, the type cover I have here is a signature edition with Alcantara fabric, though there are several color options for you to choose from. For the 2017 model, the edges are further rounded and most, if not all, of the type covers are made out of the Alcantara fabric. My one concern is that the cloth material will wear out faster than other materials such as plastic or aluminum. For example, the MacBook that I reviewed earlier shows almost no discoloration even though it's 7 years old. After powering on the device, you are greeted by the 12.3 inch pixel sense display that has a resolution of 1236 by 1824 with a 2x3 aspect ratio. It looks super crispy and it's the best display I've ever used by far. In broad daylight, it can be difficult to see though, but it's better than average. Located above the display is a 5 megapixel camera and flash, a microphone, and Windows Hello, which is probably my favorite feature just because of how quick and reliable it is. As you can see, the front facing camera is decent and it should be great for video calls. Also located on the front of the device are the dual front facing speakers. They sound better than your average laptop and can get quite loud. Turning the device on its side, you will find the magnetic charging port that can also function as a dock connector, if you happen to buy the accessory of course. It's these little additions like the magnetic cable that make the experience even better. It's sad to see the 2016 MacBook ditch this beloved staple feature. Additionally, the power adapter also contains a USB port so you can charge a phone or a tablet at the same time. The device also includes one USB 3.0 Type A port and a mini display port as well as a headphone jack on the left side. In comparison, the 2017 model offers the exact same port configuration and a similar screen that has a reduced latency. 
I expected by now for Microsoft to add a Type-C port, but hopefully they're saving their new technology for the Surface Pro 5. Personally, a majority of my daily devices use Type-A or Micro-USB, so this omission doesn't bother me. Flipping the device over, there is a patented kickstand with a micro SD card slot underneath. The kickstand is very versatile due to its 150 degree angle range, and it should be able to suit any need. I'm happy to say that the experience is still great even if you need to type in your lap. Up top is the 8 megapixel camera and microphone. It's usable if you ever need it, but I wouldn't want to look like this. Once again, I decided to get a dbrand skin for protection and style. I'll put a link in the description if you're interested. Moving on, the Surface Pen is very helpful for taking notes. For example, if I were in college, I could use a stylus to handwrite my notes in OneNote and then store them in OneDrive so all my connected devices could view them. I'm curious to know how many people actually use this feature though. Although the pen is great for note taking, most people will use it for artwork. It features an average 1024 levels of pressure sensitivity, something I think not a lot of people will notice. The only problem that I've noticed is when drawing a diagonal line slowly, it ends up being very jagged and rough. The pen is exceptional for a quick sketch, and depending on the application, you can create some nice artwork. Because I'm not a good artist, I decided to get my friend's opinion who is the owner of a popular webcomic. I'll leave a link in the video description if you're interested. Due to the screen providing resistance, he recommended using a glove for smoother drawing on the glass screen. He knows that the Surface Keyboard got in the way while drawing, so if key commands are desired, it's best to use a Bluetooth keyboard. He also found that the kickstand was very convenient for positioning the tablet in different environments and that its portability made it great for sketching. The weight of the pen did not hinder drawing capability, and the sensitivity is adjustable to the artist's needs. Overall, he still prefers the desktop tablet combo because it's easier to do key commands and use a mouse. For the complete experience, you can purchase a $100 to $130 optional, aka the pretty much essential, type cover. Typing has great feedback and a surprising amount of travel considering how thin the keyboard is. I actually prefer this keyboard over the 2010 MacBook because the keys don't feel as mushy, but only time will tell. In fact, I actually typed most of this review using this keyboard. I also found the glass trackpad excellent. It uses the Windows Precision drivers and has great feedback for its buttons. It offers a very similar experience to using a MacBook trackpad. However, I've noticed that sometimes tracking can become inaccurate and the pointer on screen will slightly shift away from my intended target as I click. This has happened to me many times and I hope that Microsoft is able to patch it in the future with a software update. Similarly to the Pro 4, the 2017 edition does not include the type cover. Instead, it costs an extra $100 for the new signature edition. According to other reviews, it offers a very similar experience to the one found on the Surface Pro 4. One last note, I feel that the type cover is too much of a necessity for it not to be included. In my opinion, Microsoft should include one in the box or at least have more affordable bundles available because you can't really do much without it. Even on their website, Microsoft is advertising their tablet as a laptop. It's like they're selling a laptop, but the keyboard is disabled until you pay over $100. I was even more surprised that Microsoft didn't bundle the stylus with any of their models this year. Instead, they are charging an extra $100 for it. I guess they're taking a note from Apple on this one. In all seriousness, I think the exclusion is due to the new technology that Microsoft included. The pen now features tilt support, as well as 4096 levels of pressure sensitivity. Furthermore, the pen jitter has now been greatly reduced when compared to its predecessors. These enhancements should generate a superior drawing experience if you opt to pay the extra $100. The Surface Pro 4 holds up remarkably well despite being over a year old. The only major downside I see in choosing the older model versus the 2017 edition is the decrease in battery life and performance. Pretty much everything else stayed the same with only a few omissions. Personally, I recommend the Surface Pro 4 over the new 2017 model because I feel that the subtle improvements that were made aren't worth the extra cost, including the no longer bundled stylus and more expensive type cover. However, the newly released type covers and service pen are compatible with older models if you desire to use them, but some features may not work, such as all 4096 levels of pressure sensitivity with older hardware. The bottom line is that the Surface Pro 4 remains an amazing all-around device for school, but if you want increased performance, better battery life, and a sharpened drawing experience, the 2017 model is a better choice. First off, I want to thank my friend Finnegan for helping me with this review. It was great getting someone else's point of view. Also, I would like to apologize for the lack of recent uploads. I've been quite busy learning new programs. Well, thanks for watching, and subscribe if you want to see more tech reviews and in the near future, game reviews. Bye.